A special mass for the nation is said by the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé, His Grace Jean Barga, to pray for Cameroon's unity and for God's protection against the coronavirus ahead of May 20 celebrations. Cameroon's Navy, one of the five services of the armed forces, checked piracy, armed robbery and illicit maritime activities. One of its biggest warships, the Pika, based at the Douala Seaport, is presented tonight. Elite and social groups join government's efforts to bar the way to COVID-19, from the donation of hygiene and medical material to the disinfection of markets and aids to communicators. The action is collective. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 7.30 News. Barely days to the celebration of the 48th edition of National Day, Catholic faithful implore God to restore peace in Cameroon. During a special mass today officiated by the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé, His Grace Jean Barga, the Christians prayed for God's mercy and favour as the country battles with the contagious coronavirus. Alice Mbe reports that the mass which took place at the Mary Queen of the Apostles Basilica in Yaoundé was occasion to remind all and sundry to respect government's prescribed measures. <laughs> In praise and worship, the Christians of the Mary Queen of the Apostle Basilica Mvule have prayed for Cameroon at 60 and unity at 48. His Grace Jean Barga, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé, highlighted the virtues of spirituality, discipline and hard work. We have celebrated the grace of 60 years of independence of our country and the grace of the 48 years of uh, national unity. In this same occasion, we have honored the Lady, the Virgin Mary, King of the Apostles. The celebration also marked the dedication of the country to God. We have prayed against the pandemic COVID-19. Invite all the faithful and all the citizens to be mobilized to face this pandemic. At the same time, we have prayed to the resumption of the normal activity, the schools, the offices, and many jobs we are doing now. We ask God to bless it, to help the people to continue to live. The Archbishop called on the Christians to remain vigilant and to respect government barrier measures, especially personal hygiene and social distancing. Maintaining the unity of Cameroon has been one of the major preoccupations of President Paul Beer since his accession to power in 1982. The president has been working with Cameroonians from the nook and cranny of the country, regardless of ethnic, political or religious convictions. In the following report, Charles Ebonet looks at the head of state's persistent quest to preserve national unity. An example of a united people freely moving around the country like they are president here. The fatherland is a collective heritage. Le sentiment national the national sentiment does exist in Cameroon. You can see the unanimous support enjoyed by the national football team. That sense of belonging defines the memory of the roughly 25 million people from plus 250 ethnicities in a plural state to lay a better future. It is only in an atmosphere of peace and solidarity that we can plan for the future of our children. Abound trials to national unity, the abortive military takeover, the Bakasi fracas, the terrorism challenge, and today's cessation. But Paul Bia remains focused on Cameroon's indivisibility. Are we going to challenge our national unity? This achievement on which our country is anchored, clearly, it is out of question. The mission to preserve the integrity of the country is constitutionally taken from the one of the New Deal administration. When Cameroonians are united, nothing can stop them. 
This man's penchant for national unity is best exemplified by the statement made in Boya 37 years ago. Quote, I was born a Cameroonian, I remain a Cameroonian, and I shall die a Cameroonian. End of quotation. If you're here to hear the story of Cameroon's reunification, then this is your opportunity. As Honorable Eno Tanjong, one of those who lived the 1972 reunification process, shares his memory of the events. One of the positions he occupied during that period was that of Secretary General to the Prime Minister of the then West Cameroon, the late Estimona. Kange Williams Wasaloko has that tale from Boya. Honorable Eno Tanjong is one of the few survivors of the reunification process of 1972 as Secretary General to the then Prime Minister of West Cameroon, the late Solomon Tandemuna. He revisits vividly how the drama unfolded. I was the Secretary General to the Prime Minister of West Cameroon at the time, the Honorable Tandemuna. When he came from Yawende after the announcement by the first president of the referendum. There was um, uh, enthusiasm all around as to the aspects of uh, a united uh, country. According to the pioneer governor of the Southwest province, the pressure for reunification came from the indigenous west of the Mungu. And the question of uh, the expenditures that were being made for governance. Uh, there were high expenditures being made for governance with three governments. Mm -hmm. Three governments, the federal government, the East Cameroon government, and West Cameroon. the West Cameroon government. The retired politician is of the view that a truly decentralized system, which is currently being accelerated by the head of state, President Paul Bia, will foster development at the local level. The intention of our founding fathers mm -hmm. was that we would come together in one country in one country and uh, those who think that uh, we should be divided we should go and found another country at completely wrong uh, we have had after the uh, national dialogue agreed that uh, there would be a decentralization a, a decentralized system mm -hmm. which will bring the government uh, nearer to the people and would listen to the requests and the desires of the people. Pai Notanjong, however, re echoes the president's call for young Cameroonians who are still resisting the call of the president to lay down their arms and regain their place as true patriots who should contribute towards the building of a united Cameroon. And away from that reunification till defense forces throughout the national territory continue to work tirelessly to serve the nation and to uphold the values of peace and unity. We focus tonight on the special team for rapid intervention at sea, who have been ensuring that civilians are kept far from harm's way. And this has been through the toll-free number 117. Constantine Baum reports on the experiences. One of the units in Cameroon's police force is a special team for rapid intervention known also as AC. The unit is having an increased presence on some key spots of every major route within the city of Yaoundé. Created in 2004 to meet up with the growing insecurity challenges, they have succeeded in helping other police units to enforce laws, prevent crimes and respond to emergencies, which is their principal assignment. When we receive a call, we sent with deploy teams to the field. This room, where calls are received, is very important to the team. This is the room that links the rapid intervention team to distressed individuals. The toll-free number to get to them is 117. For the time we spent in their office, no serious calls came from the public, as many were prank calls. We can receive even 2,000 calls by day. Some person has, they know that the Santi said it's free call. They call even to disturb. The special team for rapid intervention was created to respond to emergencies, but their services today go beyond that. The help of population is very important in our works. Sometimes you receive call about uh, no, no person who denounce some infraction in, in the level. 
They have contributed in preventing crime, ensuring the protection and respect of institutions and property. Hardened criminals have been fished out in many neighborhoods in Yaoundé thanks to the commitment of the special team for rapid intervention. Cameroon Navy has been acquiring modern military equipment and ships to effectively carry out maritime operations at sea. The Navy, which is one of the five service branches of the Cameroon Armed Forces, today has over 1,300 troops securing the country against threats of piracy, armed robbery and other illicit maritime activities. Ewane Epole now presents one of the biggest warships of the Navy, the Pika, which is based at the Douala Seaport. This is Dipika, one of the Cameroon's Navy biggest warship, stationed at the Douala Seaport, not far from the naval base. The warship is managed by the surface forces for major maritime operations. Dipika is one of our precious assets that the Cameroon Navy have to conduct its mission in terms of law enforcement at sea, in terms of uh, surveillance, protection, of uh, uh, our facilities we have along, uh, along the coast. Also in terms of protection and defense of our maritime space. The ship is equipped with military arsenal to ensure internal and external security. The guys of the Farafred Fighting Brigade with their equipment, they protect the ship by a, a, a fire who can occur at any time. For the self-defense of the ship, we have a machine gun who can protect. We are well equipped in terms of gun, to handle the case of piracy. The military warship, Dipika, has a bed space of over 20 persons, toilets, bathrooms, parlors, and a well-equipped kitchen to cook food for the soldiers while on a maritime operation. <laughs> In other news, maintenance work on the Ngaoundere Garua Road is advancing satisfactorily in spite of challenges faced by the contracting companies such as the lack of bitumen. The assessment was made by the Adamawa Regional Delegate for Public Works, Isaac Pegoko, during an evaluation tour to the site. Ellis Waji Bangmia says the construction work is a huge relief to the users of the National Route No. 1. It shall soon be a continuous smooth ride for commuters plying the Ngaoundere Garwa Highway following the level of maintenance works currently going on along the road. The job consists of treating critical sections of the road between the end of the Mbe Cliff to the Kirewa Bridge using bituminous concrete. So we have effectively finished all works with signalization from Pong Sala right down to Pong Kirewa, which is uh, 80 kilometers. Now the works between between end of uh, lot two and the uh, Mbe town have almost been finished. So we have works critically on the uh, Mbe work section of the road, which is very, very critical. The outbreak of the coronavirus and other factors have delayed the evolution of works. The principal difficulties have been uh, obtaining uh, the raw materials, which is the bitumen, bitumen. It's imported, and you know the problem which is going on now, uh, the pandemic of COVID, which is uh, uh, disturbing even the frontiers are now closed. During a visit to assess the progress of the project, the Adamawa Regional Delegates for Public Works encouraged the contractors to complete the infrastructure. Project has waste more times than uh, we, we propose. We are seeing the, the effort of the contractor. Before leaving the site, the regional delegate was reassured that maintenance works on the most critical portions of the National Road Number 1 shall be completed latest by the end of June 2020. We now begin our series of reports on the fight against COVID-19 in the Northwest region, where the Secretary of State at the Ministry of Public Health, in charge of epidemics and pandemics, Alim Ayatu, has paid a working visit to evaluate the efforts made in restraining the coronavirus. From the COVID-19 screening post in Matazim, he visited the Bamenda Low Cost Housing site to host coronavirus patients, as well as the Bamenda Regional Hospital, where they are quarantined. Eric Langmiawufu has a roundup of the visits.
The Northwest region has registered 35 cases of COVID-19 and six deaths. It is because of this that the Secretary of State in the Ministry of Public Health in charge of pandemics and epidemics, Halima Yato, called on everyone to come on board to put a stop to COVID-19. A mass stop was notably in Matazum, where a COVID-19 screening post has been installed. Here, close to 200,000 people have been screened on temperatures and other vital signs since the month of March. 2020. He later visited the Banana Lucas housing site where an isolation unit is to go operational. Halim Hayato paid a walking visit to the Banana Regional Hospital and Azam Hotel where suspected persons have been quarantined. All population in Banana, all population in West, all administration and population, all personal medical evaluation, the synergy to fight against COVID 19. I like the separation country to fight the same energy, the same engagement and the same volunteer. In the Northwest, there are two screening posts installed by the Northwest Public Health Delegate Dr. Kingsley Chiso to check all travelers entering the region of COVID-19. One is in Matazem Center and the other in Widikum on the Trans-African Highway. The head of state's order to distribute 2 million face masks free of charge to the 10 regions targets, amongst others, the vulnerable and market traders. That notwithstanding, a good chunk of them still go about their business with no measure of protection. In markets around Yaoundé, physical distancing is neither respected nor is their items for sale preserved for contamination. Alice Mbe tells us more. A day to the market in Yaoundé, the COVID-19 pandemic seems to be a joke to some traders who continue to expose foodstuffs on the ground and on very untidy environments. They care less about wearing a face mask or practice hygiene and distance measures. While at the Fundi market, the case is not different, even though some traders say they make some efforts to protect themselves and their customers. I wear my mask before rendering a service to any customer. When there are customers around, I serve them. After that, I do wash my hands or use my hand sanitizer. Customers testify they implement hygiene measures when they return home with their goods. When I finish buying my goods, I go home, wash and sterilize them before using. I wear my face mask to protect myself and others. Why health specialists say it is very risky to move about without a face mask. The importance of wearing a face mask is that it creates a barrier between you and the person wearing it. If someone is sick and does not wear a face mask, there is a high risk of the individual contaminating others. This is prevented with a mask on. Following measures online by the government to fight against the spread of the COVID-19, such as wearing a face mask and hygiene practice must be respected. The risk of getting infected with the coronavirus is also very high in entertainment spots and amusement parks where respecting physical distancing is not obvious. With the easing of barrier measures by government, these leisure points are gradually being visited as managers struggle to make obligatory the consideration of hygiene rules. Joyce Tata went downtown Yaoundé and now reports on what obtains in these sports. Their smiles alone tell of the joy in their hearts to have fun-filled moments with friends at playgrounds after being indoors for weeks. When I was in the house, I was eating, playing with my tablet and watching TV. But now I'm not, I am happy to be here playing with my friends. Parents can now heave a sigh of relief seeing their kids happy even if they must be kept under close watch. When we arrived, we were asked to wash our hands properly so we feel secured. I'm happy to have my kids here because they kept on complaining they are tired of staying home all day. We have reduced the number of kids we receive here to less than 50. They can't put on face masks since they are playing. Before admitting them here, we find out from parents if they are in good health so everyone is safe from the coronavirus. The zoo is also one of the leisure spots adults and children love visiting. But before access is granted, everyone thoroughly washes their hands and puts on their face mask. 
During the visit, we trying to explain to the visitor the, 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 they should avoid to go too close the, the fences. While hoping the pandemic is dealt with soonest, so they share these moments with many more friends, little Leia remains busy with her ride. Inhabitants of Tumbel municipality have been reminded that the only way to stop the coronavirus from getting into the subdivision is to scrupulously respect government's rules. The message was echoed during the distribution of President Paul Beer's special gift. Henry McCauley has the details from CRTV Southwest. The ceremony to distribute the president's anti-COVID-19 kits took place at the Tombell Municipal Grandstand. The gifts included buckets, soap, hand sanitizers, masks, amongst other things. Handing the gift to the different beneficiaries, who included chiefs and religious leaders, the dear for Tombell, Mr. Nyam Leonard, urged them to put the gift into proper use, insisting that that is the only way to prevent COVID-19 from getting into the subdivision. If you've seen the number of items, the volume is high. It stands to the head of state consultation that we've had with the council and they understood that we could give a coloration to the gifts of the head of state. The COVID-19 is not yet over and the measures that have been enacted by government must be scrupulously respected. Wearing of masks is an obligation and nobody should appear in any public place without a mask. Accompanying the deal in the distribution was the mayor of Tumba, Madame Rose Ngasa, who before now had put in place initiatives to educate the Tumba population on the dangers of the disease and how to prevent it. Tumba subdivision is reported not to have recorded any case of coronavirus this far. Cameroonians have been encouraged to continue respecting the over 20 government prescribed measures extended by 15 days. Health experts insist on the proper use and disposal of face masks, the respect of physical distancing and following hygiene rules, which begin with washing hands regularly with soap. Baldwin Summer is at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center and he says that just like yesterday, no case of recovery has been recorded. Hi, Baldwin. Hello, Baldwin, we can get you. Get us, you Good evening, informing. Esther Kima. Welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center this Sunday evening, where the number of persons who have recovered from COVID-19, the figures have not been made available by public health experts of this emergency operations center. They say the reason is simple. This is so because uh, they are still receiving statistics from the different regions of the country concerned with the spread of this virus. And they say that they will make the available the confirmed number of uh, communities who have recovered from uh, the virus was in the hours or in, or in the days ahead. They have used the opportunity to condemn uh, uh, stigmatization that some medical personnel are suffering from in the country, uh, stigmatization from the public, from the society, given that most Cameroonians look at them as potential COVID-19 infected persons simply because they are taking care of COVID-19 patients in the country and public health experts of this uh, emergency operation center are calling on Cameroonians to rather encourage these medical personnel, given that they have put in so much and they have dedicated so much time to save as many lives as possible. And they are equally using the opportunity to remind Camunians to continue making use of the hotline, which is the toll free number 1510. Dial this number on a regular basis if you wish to report any suspected case of an individual uh, suffering from a COVID 19 or if you wish to know more how this virus is easily spread or how to avoid being infected with the virus. And equally, public health experts of this emergency operations center are reminding Cameroonians that screening for COVID-19 in Cameroon is free of charge. So the take-home message from here tonight is that uh, no case of uh, recovery has been recorded here at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center this Sunday evening. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thank you very much, Baldwin Summer, for that clarification. And it is worth noting that screening for COVID-19 as well as treatment 
is free of charge. The Far North region with 27 COVID-19 cases recorded is intensifying social distancing checks and other government directives in the town of Marua and beyond. At a meeting presided over by Governor Miji Awabakari, recommendations include the reinforcements of security controls and the equipping of checkpoints with adequate material to detect any cases of infections. Henry Tato Ikambi has the details of that evaluation meeting. In two days, the number of COVID-19 cases in the Far North jumped from 8 to 27, as Far North Governor confirms. In the Far North region in general, we have 27 cases. We have two persons die, one person who for recover. With top health officials in the region claiming most of the cases come from travelers, the evaluation meeting had as one of its main recommendations the reinforcement of measures at a checkpoint in Magada found at the entrance of Marua. Far North Governor who chaired the meeting also gave firm instructions for the respect of social distancing in banks, the disinfection of schools before resumption and an increase in awareness as a whole. We also get two or three hotels in the town. Different places have been visited to see how to manage those places in order to receive person who will get COVID-19. And uh, we want to uh, put emphasis on sensitization. Tough instructions were also issued to the Muslim clergy to ensure the respect of preventive measures in the mosque so that coronavirus will be defeated in the region. Youth are also involved in the fight against COVID-19. In Bamenda 1 subdivision, some 30 youth under the coordination of the president of the Mandela Voluntary Foundation, Samuel Atigi, have been supplying the inhabitants portable water to use in hand washing in order to reduce the risk of infection. All Latin Titanki tells us more from the Northwest. Health experts recommend hand washing with clean running water and soap as one of the preventive methods against the COVID-19 spread. Some areas in the Bamenda 1 subdivision are reportedly faced with limited water supply. It is against this backdrop that the coordinator of the Mandela Voluntary Foundation and some 30 youths are volunteering to fill the empty tap buckets placed at some strategic positions and institutions in the subdivision with water. I'm going to several places to wash my hands and I discovered that there's no water to wash hands. So I came together, I, I called the young people together so that we can volunteer and fill water in this bucket that are uh, standing by the roadside. Inhabitants of the municipality salutes the initiative. The volunteers under the Mandela Voluntary Foundation will in the days ahead extend their services to the Bamenda 2 and 3 subdivisions. In the meantime, they are encouraging other youths in the northwest region to follow their example and do same in their different neighborhoods. Away from the northwest region, the population of the 36 villages that make up Bokito subdivision in the center region have received sanitary kits to keep them safe from COVID-19. The traditional rulers who were handed over the items by the administrative head of the area pledged to join government to raise awareness to the need to engage in responsible behavior in their communities. Baldwin Sama traveled to Bokito. He now reports for the 730 News. Thousands of face masks and cartoons of camouflage as some of the sanitary kits distributed to the populations of the 36 villages that make up Bokito subdivision. Thanks to a group of elites of Bokito, these sanitary kits are meant mainly for schools, given that they will soon resume. We choose to come to the village to protect the population that is already vulnerable to the virus. All the gifts that get here can't be enough for the population of Bokito. Reasons why we brought these kids. From the different speeches, municipal and traditional authorities thanked the donors who on their part expressed joy, helping stop the spread of the virus given that no case has so far been recorded here in Bokito. Another philanthropic gesture towards ousting the coronavirus has also been made in Konyambeta subdivision in Bam and Inuvo division of the center region. The event was presided over by the divisional officer Longo Silvi Chantal, as we hear this report by Victor Sig. 
This is the Yambeta subdivision. In the BAM and Inubu division, with the population exposed to COVID-19. Though with no confirmed case of the coronavirus, the goodwill actions spearheaded by a son of the locality, Bageka Asobo Alfred, represented, is timely. The gesture goes in line with the government's struggle to curb the pandemic. Through this, we want to strengthen these government actions in this locality. It was really necessary to come to the rescue of this vulnerable population. The bucket, cartons of soap, face masks, and a package of hydroalcoholic gel were handed to traditional chiefs of the area and chiefs of the 12 villages and health centers in the subdivision. I would like to thank the son of Yambeta for the gesture and I'm here by calling on other sons and doctors of the locality to follow the example. To the population, they should know that even we have no case of the virus, it's necessary to respect the barrier measures like wearing of masks and constant washing of our hands. The beneficiaries were admonished to let the items go beyond the suburbs to save lives. Away from that event, presided over by Lombos Civilian Talf, the Banner Council Executive has also been beneficiaries of assistance from the Kaji de Foso family to intensify the fight against the coronavirus. Beyond the handing over of face masks and breathalyzers, the team also disinfected the banner markets and called on the population to remain vigilant and responsible. Doreen Asangu tells us more. The fight against the propagation of the coronavirus in Burma in the upper plateau is getting more and more intense. The Burma Council Executive, with the support of the Fatwa Lakaji the Foso Foundation, just offered an anti-COVID kit comprising of bucket tops, sprayers, face masks, and much more to the people of Burma. The foundation equally offered an artificial respirator. Together with the Municipal Council Executive, they proceeded to the Burma market for disinfection and sensitization against the deadly pandemic. The mayor of Burma, Jean-Baptiste Sanga, expressed profound gratitude while the divisional officer, Bob Igari Manuel, advised the people to keep on respecting barrier measures put in place by the government so as to win the battle against the virus. The Cameroon English Language Newspaper Publishers Association is also extending a hand of fellowship to the media exposed to the contagious virus. At a press conference chaired by the association's president, Christian Ga Christian, a detailed program on the distribution to media men was outlined. Alice Bay with the details. These kits consist of hand wash buckets, face masks, washing soaps, hand sanitizers and disinfectants worth hundreds of thousands. The items will be distributed to all media houses in Cameroon to fight against the coronavirus that continues to wreak havoc around the world. Senpa is aware that uh, journalists are more vulnerable to coronavirus. Uh, because we go out on the field every day to cover events and then to interview people whose status we journalists don't know. We thought that we could also join government in the fight against this global pandemic. The initiative of St. Park and other partners is to accompany the government during this crisis and to protect journalists and their environments. What is more important about this gesture by St. Park is not the quantity or quality of the kits, but the intention behind it. We want to reach out to as many media organs as possible. In the past, St. Pa has assisted government's efforts in the back-to-school drive in the northwest and southwest regions by donating school kits to pupils and students. It has also organized conferences on crisis reporting and peace building in the country. In another goodwill gesture, the Muslim faithful of the South region have been donated food items and basic commodities to ease their month of fasting and prayer. The benefactor, the CPDA member of the National Assembly, Honorable Jean-Jacques Zam, on the occasion, lauded the peaceful coexistence and religious tolerance in Ebolova. Derich Alengmi has the details. 1,500 Muslim faithfuls resident in the Hausa quarter in Ebolova have received food items and anti-COVID-19 kits from Honorable Jean-Jacques Zam, represented by his deputy Honorable Fanny Mbonomo. We, we brought the foods, 
bucket and uh, rice flour so that they can feed themselves during the, the, the Ramadan. Touched by this act, they all express gratitude and satisfaction. We have received the gift. This is a big gift. This is very important for the Muslim because we have we are in a difficult time now. We are in uh, we, we are in the season of COVID-19. It's very 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 important for the Muslim. They they are considering it as a gift, gift as a big gift. So we are thank him and we are asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to assist him. This courtesy equally symbolizes national unity and living together. It has also earned him the title Abrazam. And that will be all for this edition of the 7.30 News tonight. Thanks for watching. Please tune to our programs on the CRTV at 8.30 p.m. Join Karin Olivia Beat for the news in the French language. Stay safe and stay protected. Stay at home also if you can.